Okay, here's a little video tour of my recently EV converted low cost. So first of all, what is the car? Well, it's called a low cost, L-O-C-O-S-T, and it's a replica of a Lotus 7. Um, people can build these from scratch like I did or buy kits that are various levels of completion. For this one, Basically, I bought the book with the plans. I laid out the steel, welded the chassis, and built the whole thing from the ground up. Certain parts were purchased, like the fiberglass, the carbon fiber, uh, some bits of aluminum, and so on. But uh, otherwise, it's all been fabricated by me. Uh, it started life with a 1000cc Yamaha R1 motor uh, from a 2004 and that was fun but it was really loud and it had a lot of issues uh, with low-end torque um, you know this vehicle's not super heavy but it's heavier than the bike was and uh, so getting it going was was not fun additionally it was geared such that uh, even you know cruising on the highway I was doing something like five or six thousand rpm and that got kind of old, kind of quick. <laughs> um, the, auto, the car is obviously street legal, but uh, the main purpose for it is autocross. And there are certain rules in autocross for sound limits. And with the bike engine and the biggest muffler I could fit on the side of the car, I was still having issues with uh, getting called for, for sound. Um, we use a 92 decibel cutoff and it was often very close to or slightly above that so for all those reasons I decided to do a conversion so the basics of the car are it's got in the front the, the battery which is out of a Chrysler Pacifica in the rear it's got the drivetrain out of the Nissan Leaf but it's been flipped around backwards and modified a little bit to work uh, I had to do a completely new rear suspension to accommodate that. Uh, the original rear suspension setup was a three-link uh, solid rear axle out of a Ford Ranger, and that all had to go, and so now it's independent suspension. I did keep the brakes, and uh, what I did was the, the front spindles are from an SN95 Mustang, and so are the brakes. And the reason I did that initially is so that I could use Mustang rear brakes on the Ranger rear axle. Uh, it's pretty trivial to convert it from drum brakes to SN95 rear brakes, and I wanted them the same. So when I did the conversion, I basically wanted to keep all that. So what I did was I designed my own upright and made it so that it would accept the Ford brakes still, but it would accept a Nissan Leaf um, wheel bearing, which lucky for me, it happened to be the same bolt pattern. I changed the studs so that I could use the same lug nuts front and back because I didn't want to mess with that. But otherwise, it's Nissan Leaf wheel bearings, axles, uh, albeit shortened, and then the whole reducer motor and inverter. Uh, the inverter is powered by an open inverter brain board, which is completely open source, and it allows full control over the inverter, which is how I was able to get full power and full speed in reverse. And in fact, the open inverter is tunable, so you can actually dial up the power a fair bit uh, higher than what it came on the original Leaf. Uh, the original Leaf was rated for 80 kilowatts, and the open inverter with this hardware is said to handle up to about 140 kilowatts, or just shy of that. And I haven't dynoed the car yet, but I'm kind of hoping to get it around the same ballpark. Uh, the car when it was bike engine powered was uh, 1250 pounds and it's picked up about 200 pounds since then but the nice thing is that weight's in the front uh, the, the rear weight didn't change all that much and it actually helped the weight balance of the car because previously you know it was something like 70 uh, or sorry 30 70 and these cars often are quite rear heavy and that's not great for handling and uh, and now it's I think it's 58, 40, sorry 42, 58, um, which is you know a lot better. Okay, I'll pull it apart and uh, take some video of the internals now. 
Okay, so first the front end. There's not a whole lot to be seen here, really. But uh, there's the battery box. Uh, originally, I made a steel angle frame for it, kind of a skeleton frame. And then I was putting 35 thou aluminum panels around the uh, outsides with a polycarbonate top, because why not? Uh, but since I started this, between starting it and, well, it's not quite finished, but between starting it and now, uh, some rules came out from the SCCA uh, dictating how EVs are uh, supposed to be constructed or, you know, converted to be eligible for uh, their racing. And that battery box was not going to fly, so I had to redo it. Uh, I redesigned it all to be uh, one eighth aluminum. It's lined with Nomex paper on the inside with capped on tape around the seams and what have you. And uh, it's a little bit heavier, but it's definitely a lot more robust and it's, uh, <laughs> it looks better, frankly. Um, so these were done by Sand Cut Sand. Uh, I sent the 3D CAD files. It was pretty nice because I modeled the thing in Autodesk Inventor and I was able to just send step files uh, without doing flat patterns or anything for the bends. And they were able to, to bend it all up and everything fit perfectly, which was awesome. Um, I don't have the capability to cut holes that precisely in a piece this size. Uh, I certainly don't have the capability of doing precise bends like they do, but it's all laser cut and CNC bent. And uh, yeah, thankfully it all, it all came out great. Um, so there's one side, I'll just walk around to the other side here to show off the contactor box. So per SCCA guides, all the orange stuff here is either high voltage or stuff that connects to high voltage. So I've um, got my high voltage lines that go to the rear. Uh, those actually I have to change because it's the wrong kind of wire <laughs> for those rules. Um, and then contactor control and some other stuff. Uh, so the contactors live in here. Um, as well as uh, some fuses for the charger and DC-DC converter. Uh, I did keep the original radiator, which was actually meant for a Honda Civic, but it cooled the Yamaha engine just fine, and so I figured it would work just fine for this. Uh, so there's an electric water pump up front that feeds into the battery box, and then it comes out of the battery box and to the rear of the car. And there's all my electrical stuff. It's not as clean looking as I would like, but it's functional. <laughs> and then moving to the inside of the car, I've got a Raspberry Pi on the left. The screen on the right is the dilithium display. So the Raspberry Pi runs Open Auto Pro, and it's got uh, navigation and some other bells and whistles. Uh, the main nice thing about it is I'm able to go into the Linux part of that and connect to the inverter or to the dilithium system, the MCU, BMS, and uh, I can do data logging, I can tweak settings, I can, you know, check the status and so on. And then the screen on the right just shows voltage, um, current, it uh, shows a battery charge level and, and that sort of thing. And then down here, I've got a motorcycle speedometer, which is just connected to one of the drive shafts for its speed reading. And that serves as my speedometer, odometer. It's got the turn signal lights and the high beam lights wired up and all that stuff, which is required for it to be street legal. Uh, FNR switch for uh, neutral reverse. I do have a knob um, that's like a lighted click knob, uh, but I haven't bothered installing that yet and then a mount for my phone so I can do some, you know, race render, uh, track addict, data logging and whatnot. And then don't mind all the other junk here. I'm doing some data logging right now, but I need the laptop to analyze the logs and then use that information to uh, tweak the settings. And also, on this side of the car, we'll notice that I still have some holes to deal with. So that's where the exhaust came out. And this mess here is where the muffler was mounted and where there was a heat shield with some sealer that took the paint off with it. Uh, obviously the car is meant for autocross, so uh, looks are definitely um, 
take a back seat to all that, which is also why I painted the car the simplest kind of satin black that I could find. Um, the one concession to style is these carbon fiber front fenders. And originally, I had taken a steel trailer fender, cut it in half, and put one half on either side. And it didn't have a whole lot of coverage, and it looked awful. Um, so I did kind of splurge and got those shipped here from the UK. Uh, while I was working on the conversion, I also took the time to adjust the suspension a little. So originally, these shocks were mounted down here. And this plate here, this cleaner looking part, is uh, something I added during the conversion to help stand up the shocks a bit. Um, with this mount, they were too far laid down and it was uh, outside of the recommended range for the shocks. So the mechanical advantage wasn't quite right and standing them up a bit made them a little stiffer. And then once I was able to weigh the car, I was also able to figure out uh, the springs I needed and order those and everything. Okay, on to the back. Okay, I lied uh, one other, a couple other things about the front of the car. The hole in the hood is where the intake was for the motorcycle engine, and this hood was a real pain in the butt to make. So rather than redoing it and repainting it and everything, I just decided to put some louvers in <laughs> where the intake was and you can kind of see the battery box in there and I figure because everything else is pretty well sealed it would be good for the air coming through the radiator to have some other places to escape so there's one the exhaust hole is the other uh, I am planning on putting something over there but I'm thinking something more like a reverse uh, scoop Maybe 3D print something and then kind of heat it to the, the curvature there. I'm not really sure. If anyone has any suggestions, I'm all ears. And then these holes, by the way, are for a windshield. I do have a proper framed glass windshield, but I really don't like it. And uh, I'd much prefer to just use the short windshield and wear my helmet when I'm driving it because the glass windshield doesn't really protect you anyway, so the, the helmet's kind of handy to have regardless and it's obviously required for autocross so yeah I just prefer to keep that windshield on it all right off the back so here we've got a standard J1772 charge port so I can plug this in at home or I can plug it into a charging station a public charging station that supports that little indicator here showing that it's charging and approximately what state of charge you're at uh, which is also shown on the display on the dash there's the inverter. Um, this piece here came from Inductive Auto, which is really cool. Uh, they've got some, some other parts for mounting leaf components, so you can even mount the inverter separate from the motor, and then they've got pieces that connect the two. And this made it really simple to, uh, to do up the wiring. Uh, it's definitely better than the part I was going to 3D print, and it's required per, uh, per code anyway. Uh, down here we can see the uh, the leaf reducer box and again mounted backwards so what I did to help with oiling since it's going backwards the differentials spinning the wrong way and so instead of slinging oil where it's supposed to it's kind of slinging it the other way so there's an oil pump that's in the transmission tunnel now and it was salvaged from a BMW <laughs> um, a transmission oil oil cooler pump i believe and basically it pulls oil from where the drain plug is and then feeds it back into this port which i drilled and tapped into the stock um oil galley that's that where the oil pools and then i drilled some extra holes and carved some grooves in the inside of the housing to get oil down to all the bearings and don't have a lot of mileage on the car yet but so far so good <laughs> Uh, so this here is the charger. It's a Thunderstruck TSM 2500. So it tops out at uh, 3 kilowatts. So it's not the fastest charger, but it's not the biggest battery. So, so far it hasn't really been a, a hassle. If I had room, I could put a bigger charger in here, or you can run multiples of these in parallel. Don't really want to do that because of weight, but... Uh, uh, I've also been considering some kind of off-board charger that I can kind of mount on the tow rig and then bring the car over and plug it in if I need to charge faster at an event or something. But uh, 
the battery is 16 kilowatt hours, so I, I don't think I'm going to need to do that at a standard autocross day. Coolant reservoir, this is just the highest part of the cooling loop, so that's where the reservoir went. And then down here we can see the 12 volt battery, which is uh, actually just a holdover from the motorcycle engine. I uh, just relocated it to the back. And all of my wiring, which I'm still not happy with back here, but sometimes I need to get in here and tweak things, and there's a few more compliance things that I need to add, so I'm going to have to change some of this anyway. But uh, for the time being, it's all perfectly workable, thankfully. Okay, a little bit more about the rear suspension. I don't know how well this is all going to show up, but that's what I came up with. Kind of see the, the hubs that I had machined in there. And lessons learned the tow link where it's shown there is too close to the pivot point of the the rear knuckle so I, I, you know it's tough to make really small changes when you're changing your toe kind of learned that the hard way and it was a real pain in the butt to do when i was uh doing my wheel alignment uh, i got it in the end i got the precision i wanted and the car drives straight and feels pretty good actually so i'm happy with it uh, i hope i don't have to touch the alignment again for a while but uh, if I do I may extend those toe links a little bit further away from the, the hub. Uh, lower control arms are just a welded V with uh, rectangular steel and then the upper arms are actually just two radius rods that connect to where the upper ball joint spherical bearing is. And one of these drive shafts is modified from the original leaf. Uh, I sent it off with a measurement and they just machined it down, remachined the splines, and I was good to go. I think that was I think that was that one, yeah. The drive shaft on this side, however, only needed to be a little bit shorter than the original. And the design of the original, you've got your splines and then the stupid thing necks down for a bit before the diameter comes back up. So you cannot take just a small amount of, of length off. So they actually had to machine that side from scratch, but that's why you send them samples and measurements and then they just kind of figure out what's needed. So definitely more pricey than I was expecting or would have wanted, but I didn't want to mess with welding uh, drive shafts or anything like that. I don't trust myself enough. So just to have it done was one of the one of the few times where I just paid the experts to <laughs> do what they do best. Okay. Okay, I gotta refilm my summary here because the GoPro died. <laughs> uh, so anyway, that's the quick tour of my low-cost EV. If anyone's got any any questions or anything, uh, fire away, and I'll do my best to answer. Um, for now, the car is obviously street legal, and I'm just driving it on the street. Unfortunately, between when I started this conversion and now, EVs were banned at my local track. Um, the reason being the you know, fear of uh, lithium fires, uh, specifically damage to the venue caused by a lithium fire. So if a, if a EV goes up and it's near a, a structure or even just on the track and you know, the fire damages the surface of the track or whatever, then the insurance company doesn't want to cover that, so EVs were banned. Uh, last year, somebody realized that hybrids also have lithium batteries, and now hybrids are banned too. In fact, some places don't even want to see lithium 12-volt batteries. Uh, fair enough, you know, I understand the safety concerns and, and whatnot, but it really sucks that I basically screwed myself out of being able to race this thing for the foreseeable future. Um, I know that work is being done to allow them back on track, um, including the set of rules that I mentioned that the SCCA came out with. Uh, so I had to redo some stuff, but and the car's not quite there yet, but I wanted to make it completely compliant with those rules so that as soon as they're allowed back on track, I'm ready to go. Uh, looks like those rules are already um, in effect in certain places. It's just my club and my club's insurance company or my region's insurance company still isn't on board with it yet. So for the time being, I'll keep driving the thing on the street, keep fine-tuning it and kind of just doing shakedown runs, and the hope is to have the thing ready to go as soon as EVs are allowed back.
So there we go. Thanks for watching.